Hey everybody, John from The Escapement here, and today we're going to be doing a walkthrough of a quick little build that I was just commissioned to do. First, as usual, comes the obligatory wrist check, and this is what I like to call my 62 Mas Blur. So, SPB dial, 36mm Explorer case, and I really love this. It gets a ton of wrist time, and I've actually been commissioned to build these a few different times. So today's build is going to be centered around this beautiful Batman 62 MAS case. This build is going to be a little bit shorter than usual because this case actually comes pre-assembled as you see here, but it's great quality, sapphire crystal, sapphire bezel, and beautiful finishing on this case overall. The dial we're going to be using on this one is this beautiful Patty Wave dial from the SPB07. I love this dial. It resembles the ocean in the fact that it's brilliant blue on top and fades to dark black, and it's going to match great with our Batman bezel insert. To go along with the dial, we're also going to be using some hands from the SPV07 as well. This build is going to run off the venerable Seiko NH35 movement, and it goes without saying, for the price that you can get these, they can be made very accurate, reliable, and for this reason, almost all of my builds are NH series movements, as well as almost all other modders and many micro brand watches as well. All right, so first things first, we're going to be installing our dial onto our movement. Now this dial actually came from a watch with the crown of three, so we don't have to worry about doing anything with the feet. And there it goes, right on smoothly like it should. So now that we have the dial installed, I'll be using a piece of Radico that I only use for dials, and I'll give it a little bit of cleaning. While I do clean it almost every step of the build, this initial cleaning is extremely important, as it can remove anything that could be potentially obscured by the hands when I have them installed. This is also when you'll see me wipe off a few of the indices, just to make sure that the polish on them is right. And now that the dial is cleaned, we're going to be starting to install the hands. So just to make sure the movement is set to 12 o'clock midnight, I'm going to be winding it until the date change. And here it comes, and there it is. Now that the date's changed, the movement should be set right at 12 a.m. Now the first of the hands is the hour hand, and I like to use Radico to hold the hands because while brass tweezers can be used also, there's more of a chance of you scratching the dial or the hands with them. So I'm gonna use my hand press, and then I'm gonna initially press the hand under the right spot. And then I'll look at it from the sides and make sure the angle from the side and the bottom is also completely flat with the movement and exactly where it should be. Unfortunately, you can't really see me do much here. It is very difficult to install these hands on camera. All right, and now that the hand is installed, I'll give it a little quick winding around the movement just to make sure everything works and it's not touching or rubbing on anything. And then I'll use my Radico and I'll wipe off any of the specs or marks that could have been on the hands from installing. Now that the hand has been cleaned, I'll make 100% sure that it's in the right place and perfectly aligned with the 12 o'clock indice. Now that the hour hand has been installed, next up is the minute hand, and it's pretty much the same process as with the hour hand. First I'm going to come in with a little bit of Radico, then I'll give it a little press just to make sure it's lined up 100% with the hour hand. Then after I know it's lined up, I'm going to look at it from the side and bottom and make any adjustments to ensure that it's not angled in any way or it's not hitting the hour hand. All right, now that we have a perfect lineup, the same thing with the hour hand, I'm going to give it a little bit of a cleaning with Radico just to wipe off the spots that could have had specs put on them or marks. And I'm going to wind all the way around 12 hours to make sure the hands line up with the indices and they're all clean at every angle. Now that we have the hour and minute hands installed, the final step is going to be installing the second hand. This can be an extremely delicate process due to how small the hole is in the second hand, but really the same steps as with the others. 
This one doesn't have to be lined up because it's completely independent of the hour and minute hands. So I'll just place it on top of the pinion and then I'll press it on. And after it's pressed on, I'll give a little bit of an inspection just to make sure it's not rubbing on this minute hand and it's completely level. Now I'll line the movement again just to make sure nothing touches or rubs. All right, so now that we have all three of our hands installed, the dial is gonna be undergoing one last final cleaning. Now this final cleaning is definitely the most important because anything that gets left on the dial here or hands is gonna show up in the final casing. You're also gonna see me rotating the dial all the way around because especially with these texture dials, different particles and specks can definitely show up under different lighting conditions and angles. I also off camera blow off the case in crystal just to make sure that nothing got on the dial. Here it is, make sure it's clean. And this is definitely my favorite part of the build. This is where you can see it all come together. Look at that. Unfortunately, my camera wasn't focusing here, but I really love how the dial looks with the bezel insert, like I said before. This build really just looks stellar. So now that the movement is cased, I'm gonna be snipping our stem to its final length. After it's cut, I'm gonna clean and deburr the end, and then I'll be screwing our stem into our crown. I applied a little thread locker to the end of the stem first hand, just to make sure that, you know, it's never gonna come out of the crown. Fortunately, my camera wouldn't focus again here, but this is where I'll be wiping off any excess thread locker that it made its way out of the crown, right here. After I wipe off the excess, I'm gonna apply a little silicone gasket lubricant to the area where the crown contacts the O-ring inside of the case. Now that we have our crown and stem cut to its final length, I'm gonna insert it into the movement inside of the case. And there it goes. Our stem is to the right length, so we should be able to push the crown in a little bit and also pull it out to the setting position, push it in, and then screw it down so it's flush with the case. It's a little bit hard to do with finger cots on. But now you can see the crown is flush with the case, so we definitely cut our length correctly. So now with our movement fully cased and our crown installed, next step is gonna be regulating the movement to ensure better accuracy. Off camera, I fully wound the watch, so that's why you could see the balance wheel beating away. And I'm gonna install the watch on my time grapher's microphone. To the time grapher, I sped this video up a little bit just for ease of watching. And the first thing I'm gonna do, as you can see, is get the beat error down to zero. I regulate these watches in three positions, crown up, crown down, and movement up per Seiko spec. So with the movement up, I ended up with plus five. That tends to be the highest position. Crown down, I ended up with zero to negative one. And then with the crown up, I ended up with around minus four to minus five seconds a day. All right, so now that our movement is cased up and regulated, I'm gonna be using some Radico and cleaning up the channel that the gasket's gonna sit in. This is just to ensure that nothing gets in between the gasket and the case and harms the watertight seal. After I do this, I'll take my gasket, which has been lubricated with silicone o-ring grease, and I'll place it in the channel, and I'll just be extra careful making sure it's sitting in the channel flush for when we put our case back on. I'll do the same thing with my case back, just make sure the mating surface in the back is clean so nothing falls into the movement. And now finally, I'll be putting my case back on. I always like to screw it in by hand first, just to make sure it's not cross-threading and it's going on correctly. And there you see me snugging it a little bit. Now after this, I'll take my case back gasket, adjust the lugs on that to the slots in the case back, and I'll give it a quick little snug. You don't want to tighten it extremely overly tight, but you definitely want it to be tight enough to remain secure all the time. All right, and here's our finished build. Guys, I think this one turned out beautifully. Special thanks to the owner for commissioning me for it and 
definitely for him, great choice on the parts on this one. If you guys liked the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you'd like to have any customized watches either built or have an existing watch modified, please visit me at www.theescapementmodding.com. You could also find me on social media. I have Facebook and Instagram, and I'll definitely put links to those down in the description as well. All right, guys, let me know what you think about this one. Thanks and happy modding.